Okay, great. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is our office hour number two. Uh, I think we briefly discussed uh, why we are hosting these uh, webinars uh, on a weekly basis. We skipped last week because of some uh, uh, logistical challenges and ill health. But primarily, we want to keep in touch with everybody, uh, get the word out about what are the changes that you should be aware of. Because we work with a ton of agencies, we work with a lot of resellers who are optimizing on behalf of their clients or optimizing their own web presence. So I think it's a good way of us keeping in touch with you, as well as if you have any specific questions or concerns or topics that you would like to, you would like us to cover, cover in these sessions, please do let us know. So let's kick off. <clears throat> Uh, new developments in what we have noticed uh, in, in Google recently, right? So there was this, uh, there were a few examples shared online uh, the other week about uh, social posts uh, showing up on, uh, on your knowledge panel on when you search for your branded search term uh, on Google. It is showing up on your Google My Business profiles. Um, so anything that you have posted on Facebook, as well as Instagram, LinkedIn, or Instagram, or, or YouTube for that matter, uh, businesses have noticed that these are showing up prominently under information uh, section on your Google My Business profiles, uh, especially for, primarily for businesses who have actually added their social media profile links on the from the GBP dashboard, you can add those links from uh, from from your sign up dashboard as well. If you don't know how to do it, just reach out to our support team and we will guide you how to do it. Okay. Uh, for some businesses, as you can see on my right hand side, uh, so for some businesses, we have noticed Facebook posts showing up on the Google My Business profile. And for some of the businesses, what I'm noticing is that the, the social media links showing up. And even for some, what I've noticed is the Facebook reviews have started showing up on the Google My Business profile as it used to happen a while ago. So Google started doing this, uh, tried doing this before as well, where they automatically tried scraping up brands social media profile links and adding them to the knowledge panel. But that failed miserably because they associated the wrong Facebook link with the wrong uh, business on Google. So they messed up, then they removed that option completely. But over the last one month, they have started rolling this out uh, again. So uh, so what does this mean? Uh, is, 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 is this going to stay or is this going to go away? We don't know. Uh, could be like the, this could be one of those 10 different experiments that Google keeps running every now and then. If it takes off, uh, they might stay, they might coexist with Google's own uh, posts. Uh, but there are talks about that Google might remove their own posts, but we don't know for sure. So the, both the functionalities are here to stay for the time being. If there are any updates or changes, uh, we will uh, let you know. Uh, secondly, what we noticed earlier was there was some updates to the Google's helpful content uh, guidelines documentation. Uh, there were a lot of questions that I came across from our customers in the past couple of weeks uh, since we talked about the helpful content update uh, guidelines uh, during the last webinar. So the typical questions rang from that, what happens if I am if I am hit with HCU, if, if there is a way... Uh, I find out that my ranking has completely tanked, my website visit, visibility has completely tanked. Will removing those unhelpful content help? So as per Google's own documentation, they mentioned that our systems work primarily at the page level to show the most helpful content. Uh, this said, having relatively high amounts of 
unhelpful content may cause other content on the site to perform less well in search to a varying degree. Removing unhelpful content might contribute to your other pages performing better. So just like most Google guidelines, it's, it's kind of vague, but there is an indication that if you actually remove the unhelpful content that was primarily created to rank better and not with the users in mind, either try removing them completely or rewrite them by adding your own perspective about the business or that industry to make it more helpful to your users. There were a lot of chatter recently about four web vitals uh, updates. Uh, Google did launch a few different updates that you can see uh, on Google's uh, documentation. Uh, there were talks about core uh, vitals, web vitals being a major ranking factor. So when going through the documentation, uh, we realized that what Google is saying, Google is, in short, what Google is saying is that uh, they use core web vitals indicators in their ranking signals, but your website does not really need to be perfect to rank well, okay? If there are other important elements that you can control by, for example, writing better content, fixing usability issues uh, for your users, work on them first before trying to fix score web titles, scores, okay? You don't have to get a perfect score to rank well or to get your clients better visibility on Google. So uh, if you have any further questions, follow-up questions, just uh, you can go ahead and ask me on this chat or just shoot us an email at, uh, at our marketing email address and we'll be more than happy to respond. Uh, if you can send over the questions to the chat, if you don't want to send it uh, publicly, you can also directly uh, DM me on the chat. Uh, I'd be happy to take it. Okay. So we run another exercise uh, over the last couple of weeks. We try to check uh, the businesses that are on our platform. And we went through several of them where we found that a basic uh, Setup is missing from a lot of websites, right? For example, I've, I've spoken to people who have not even added Google Analytics and Google Search Console tools to their website. So it's important that you add them uh, while trying to market your website. That way you can understand who's visiting your website, what keywords are they using, uh, what problems they are facing while going through the website, what is your most popular content? You get more information of your from your about your own audience. That way, you can always modify, uh, pick and choose, run experiments. If you do not have these data at your fingertips, then it will be very difficult for you to optimize for your user. Okay, uh, I've seen a ton of websites where it's like a single page website that has been built just for the brand, which is the name of the business and aspects of the business. Uh, if you are trying to rank locally, uh, on-page uh, factors still play a huge role in determining who ranks well or who is not ranking well, okay? There was, there was a recent study that I then sent across that tried to correlate on-page factors with helpful content updates as well. Uh, take a look at it. Maybe it will give you some ideas uh, how to optimize websites. But basic things we suggest is adding this free analytics tool to your website. Uh, make sure they are verified, validated. Uh, create pages with all the product and services that you sell or your customers sell. Maybe, maybe if you can write enough, if you have the budget, create a separate page for each product and each service that you sell and interlink them uh, on your website to it so that it makes sense to the user, okay? It also sends positive signals to Google about what your website is about, okay? There's a high possibility and for you to rank better and show up in relevant search results so that your customers can find you or your customers' customers are able to find the website, okay? I come across this website as we onboard 
few hundred listings on a daily basis, I come across several websites. I would say at least 30 to 40% of them have do not do basic optimization well. Okay, we, we have a free checklist on our website. If you want to take a look, uh, we will link it uh, from this uh, deck so that you can know and know what, what things to prioritize. Okay. Now, the last update that I want to discuss this week is Google suspensions. Uh, unfortunately, we came across several instances in the last one month where businesses are saying that their listings are being randomly suspended. Okay, there are times that it may seem that these are happening on a random basis, on a random basis, but that's that's not true all the time. Okay, uh, some of them are auto-generated. Basically, Google's algorithm identifies issues due to which they decide to suspend the listing from Google search results. There are times it's because of uh, manual penalty. Uh, either somebody reported your issue for malpractices or spamming and Google takes action on that. Well, uh, one of our clients, he had like four or five of his 100 plus uh, stores uh, suspended uh, on the same day. But when we try to dig into it further, we realized that it could just be a mistake from Google's end. Okay, they just wanted enough information about those new stores. All five of them were new stores that were added within the last couple of weeks. And it is a possibility that Google did not have enough information, background information about those addresses, about those locations due to which they suspended them. So do not panic uh, when your listings get suspended, you usually, Google will usually follow up with, a, with an email uh, to the, uh, they will primarily email you at the email address associated with the, uh, the primary email address associated with the listing. They will also usually mention the violent, uh, violation type. Uh, that will kind of give you a general indication of the reason your listings got suspended. Uh, as mentioned, Google can also give you manual suspension if it reviews your listing and finds something wonky going on with your listing. Uh, suspension can also happen after you make certain changes to your listing. For instance, uh, uh, you change your primary category uh, in Google uh, way too often. You change your primary information like name, address, the phone numbers way too often. Uh, you do multiple edits within a short span of time. Uh, if you all of a sudden, if you convert your storefront business into a service area business or vice versa, okay, they can all lead to suspension because Google might think or their or their spam filters might think that there's something something going on with the system. Okay. Uh, so there are two major types of suspension that we have come across and as per Google's documentation as well, one is a hard suspension, one is a soft suspension. So first you need to check uh, what type of suspension has been applied to your listing. Uh, hard suspension is usually when uh, you search for your company name, city uh, uh, on Google and uh, your business is going to show up in the knowledge panel. You know what, what you see? Uh, Ashita, can you guys see my screen? Yes, Neil. Okay. So, say for example, let's search for this business. And if it doesn't even show up on the right hand panel, then you know it's a hard suspension. Okay. And if, if it does show up, but your Google My Business, uh, dashboard shows that it's suspended, then that it means that your listing is still live. You just do not have access to it. Okay, then then it's probably a soft suspension. So some of the reasons that we have seen uh, why a listing may get suspended apart from the one that I've already mentioned, uh, this primary reason I've seen is uh, keyword stuffing 
in your business name. Uh, your business name is the Eric Gatomar Architect LLC. And all of a sudden, one fine day, you speak to somebody or read a brief about uh, some SEO article on some some website, and that mentions that it's a good idea to stuff the city name or the state name into your name. Okay, that could get you suspended. Okay, Google wants real life, real world names. Uh, you should be able to prove via documentation that the business is owned by you, and that's the register name of the business. Uh, Google does not allow usage of PO box or UPS store addresses on their address, especially in the first line of the address. So if you have recently edited your Google's, uh, the address that is mentioned on Google and switched it to a PO box UPS store, that could lead to suspension. Uh, if Google figures out that your Google, uh, your, your listing is created for the sake of lead generation only, and you're trying to fake a business by using a virtual office or a co-working space address, and you do not have any legal documentations to uh, start a business from there, that could be a potential problem. If you have a service area business and displaying a physical address where people cannot actually visit you, that's one of the reasons why. Online only businesses uh, can get suspended. Then there are high risk categories as, as uh, identified by Google, HVAC, locksmith, rehab centers, uh, personal injury lawyers, plumbers. Uh, so if you're, you're working in these categories or working with customers with these categories, make sure that you have all the check boxes ticked off to make sure you have the proper documentation and content in place uh, to make them look legitimate businesses uh, and that they are legitimate businesses. Uh, if it's a residential address and you have one or more than one businesses uh, running out of it, that could be a potential problem. Having a duplicate listing, uh, same business, same address, and two different profiles could lead to suspension at times, though not not very often because Google has gotten better at identifying duplicates and. Uh, if another business shares your same address, especially it's a residential address, it, it could lead to suspension. Uh, you have a bunch of uh, edits, as I mentioned. If you do frequent edits to your primary information, your business name, your business address, your, your hours, uh, your website, uh, or your primary category uh, within a span of hours or minutes or days, it could potentially lead to a suspension. Uh, Google hates bait and switch tactics. Uh, so I have seen people uh, adding a website link that redirects to a social media page or to a different offering altogether. That could be a potential cause for suspension. If you're changing your listing from a storefront to a service area, or from a service area to storefront often or, or temporarily, that could lead to a suspension. Uh, having multiple GBPs in the area uh, with that as service areas overlapping for the theme business, that's a problem child. Your address or hours do not match what is available on your website and your major citations, that could cause suspensions. Uh, if you are one of those uh, business owners who have, uh, uh, don't have to write this down, by the way, we will be sending out the notes at the end of the meeting. And there will be a detailed post on sign up that you can, that we will link to so that you can understand these. Uh, sorry, uh, if your business is not available uh, 247, but you just uh, wanted to keep in, keep updated with the latest, Make use of the latest uh, algorithm changes and mark your business as such that it's operational 24 seven, that it's not so, that could be a potential reason for suspension as well. If uh, you are managing multiple accounts with the same, uh, same ID uh, and you're not a multiple multi-location businesses, getting one of the managerial accounts suspended could lead to multiple suspensions within the same account. So just a word of advice, uh, try and not 
manage all of your Google My Business listings, especially if you're an agency with the same account. Okay, if if yours, I I personally recommend segregating the servicing your businesses into separate accounts. Uh, you created multiple listings for the same business at the same address. That could be potential of uh, potential reason for suspension. Any other violation of terms of service. Uh, so what should I do when my listing gets suspended? Valid question, right? First thing that you must not do as soon as your listing gets suspended is opening a new account and try to recreate the same listing immediately. Thinking, oh my God, um, my client is going to show at me or if it's my own business, I'm going to be dead straight if I don't get my listing up and running again. Google has already flagged that address. Google has already flagged that information that is associated with the listing. If you're creating another listing, in all prob probability is going to get suspended again. Okay. So first figure out what kind of suspensions has been applied to you. Is it a hard suspension or a soft suspension? Uh, if it's a soft suspension, uh, many a times you can just uh, contact support and get it up and running or Google might require you to submit additional information to get it validated. Most often than not, if it's a soft suspension and your access has been suspended, there are times you can even go in, create a claim that same listing from a different ID. Okay, do not try to reclaim it with the same ID, you won't be able to do that. So just log into Google with a different ID. If it's a soft suspension, see if you see the claim this listing option and just claim it. Go through the ver verification process. <clears throat> that should fix the problem at times. Now, if it's a hard suspension and uh, you want to submit for redress, so there are means and methods of doing it. Uh, First, go through the guidelines that Google provides and see that you are in no way uh, breaching any of those guidelines, okay? Mm, check for a few things that I would recommend checking. It's keyword stopping in names. Uh, you do not have unrelated products and services listed uh, that you do not provide at that location. Check your primary and secondary categories in Google. You make sure that you do not have unrelated uh, categories. You can use, uh, you can either log into your Google My Business profile account and make the changes if you do not have access and you're helping a client. Either ask for access or you can use something like uh, GMB everywhere to check the categories and information. Ensure that you do not have Google uh, a, a duplicate listing with the same uh, business name, address, and phone number. Uh, listed somewhere that is active. Check hours, check all relevant information, okay? Then before you apply for the statement, make sure you have the evidence list prepared. Google may ask for the official business registration that shows your officially and uh, registered and established business. Google may request the business license, uh, which proves that you are authorized or the business owner is authorized to operate the business. They may ask for a tax certificate uh, that shows the tax ID and that they validate it. Or it may also request a utility bill. Uh, and the utility bill needs to be associated with the same address. Okay. You should have potentially one or more of these documents if you're running a valid business and then uh, use the suspension appeal tool. So all you need to do is basically go here and here. Check for documentation. Okay, then go to the business appeals tool. It will ask you to make sure you're logged in with the account that you're going to work with. Um, confirm and just go through the steps. You can check back in after a few days uh, to see the status as approved or not approved. 
if approved all in good uh, if it is not approved then you need to recheck your information to make sure that you have the necessary information handy to prove to google that it's a valid business if you're still facing problems applying this or you're not sure uh, what kind of suspension it is uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, just shoot us an email or a message and give us a call and we can help you check uh, for any issues. Okay. As mentioned, I will be sending out the notes of the call. Uh, and if you or any of your clients are facing this issue, we are more than happy to help. Okay. Helpful tools of the week. Uh, so these are some, some of the couple of other tools that you can add to your arsenal. Uh, this is something that I use fairly often. Uh, you can use the free version of it or paid version of it. For example, it's a simple keyword research tool that basically gives you information about what people are searching for in Google, right? Uh, for example, I'm an architect. And I want to research what people are looking for on Google so that I can create content. Uh, sorry, I'm using the uh, free version of it. So these are the sum of the topics that it can throw up. That you can take a look at and make a list of the valid ones that's uh, applicable to your business. These are some of the topics that you can write about. The, the Best part about the tool is it brings all necessary information in one place. It gives you the keywords. It provides you the search volume information and how many searches are happening for the keyword. Uh, what's the trend like? And what's the average uh, cost per click uh, on Google Ads, right? How much will it cost you to bid on these keywords and rank that on Google Ads? And it also shows you the competition. Otherwise, what we usually end up doing is we make a list of keywords, then we go into Google Ad Planner, plug in the information to get search, uh, search information, trends information, et cetera. Uh, I use this primarily as a keyword research tool. So you can, you can basically search for any topics and make a list of uh, relevant uh, subjects that are important to your clients or your own website and do that. Or if you are researching, say, you're gonna write about how to articles, right? So you just type in how to associate a uh, long keyword, it will tell you what are people searching for? Uh, how to be an architect designer, how to become architecture, how to uh, check architecture deadline, et cetera, et cetera. Some of them are relevant to this search, some of them are not relevant to this search. It's a brilliant tool. Uh, try and give it a shot. Uh, you can uh, try on the free version. We are no way associated with uh, any of these uh, free tools that we suggest. So feel free to use them. Uh, another tool that I still use quite often, uh, even though Neil Patel purchased this one several years ago. So what does this do? So when you're going to Google and and search for architects. And you get a bunch of suggestions from Google whenever you're trying to search something, right? It basically scrapes that information and provides you an easy way of finding related topics uh, that you can write about. So it can tell you the Search volume, there's your difficulty, paid difficulty, cost per click, etc. Plus, it will, okay, still loading. It will show you a bunch of related keywords uh, that you can probably consider using. And to top it all, it can also give you, based on the SERP, it can also suggest content that is ranking well. 
so that you can get some ideas about uh, what is ranking well, what kind of topics, uh, content people are creating around that given keyword, uh, how many backlinks does it have, how many shares it has on uh, social media, like Facebook, Pinterest, and uh, Reddit. Uh, they do have a seven-day free trial, I believe, and you can find their plans and pricing over there. Very useful tool uh, if you're doing a lot of content and keyword research and optimization for your own website or on behalf of your customers. Okay, I think that's all from me for the day. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, like I said, you can send the questions over the chat. You can also directly DM me. You'll see my name over there. Just select it and send it to me if you want. Uh, I There are a few questions, Neil, uh, that I see over here. Just a second. Uh, yeah, two questions are kind of similar, so I think I'm just going to club them together. They are more relevant to the first few things we so, spoke about. Uh, yeah, so the question goes, I'm just going to quote it. Uh, will Google give preference to businesses that have linked their social to their Google profiles? Should a business prioritize social, uh, you know, alongside other channels? So what do you think? What do I think? Okay, I have not seen any proof that, uh, that tells me that uh, Google is going to prioritize any business in search results just because they have added their social media links. But social in all is is playing uh, is playing its own role as it used to, right? Uh, it depends if you want to get into it, not based on the resources and what what category of business you are in. If you think that your customers are on social media and it makes sense to amplify your content and presence on social, you should be doing it. Okay, I think in personal opinion, uh, we are, we, we, the more things change, the more things remain the same. I think we have gone to a stage now with all the updates and interlinking of social, local together, is we are going to a stage uh, where uh, you have to be omnipresent. You have to be everywhere. Okay. But But I do not mean that you just go in after this call and create like 10 new social media accounts. Uh, take a, take stock of what you can do. Uh, take stock of your customers and where they are and then take a call. Okay. Don't, don't just start social because you have to create a profile. Uh, having an empty channel with no content at all um, is, is basically worse than having no profile at all. Okay. Because there are chances that you will show up, as I showed you the other, other day, the, uh, earlier today, right? The social content is showing up fairly prominently. Uh, Google has started uh, pulling in reviews from your social channels, such as Facebook. There, there seems to be a closer integration going on. So something is changing. Makes sense. Uh, I think a lot of businesses that start with social, they uh, think it's a checkbox activity or they can just, you know, spray and pray on 10 different channels and it's going to work out. Uh, like you pointed out, it's generally not the best strategy to go ahead with. But again, it's still a relevant channel, especially if you want to engage your customers at every stage of their journey. Uh, sign up also has a handy social tool that you can use, by the way, and in, it, it integrates seamlessly with your uh, profiles, your local profiles. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay, this one is related to the Google profile suspensions. Let me just look at it. Yeah, so I'm going to quote it. So when a profile is suspended for no apparent reason, is it always reinstated? And if not, what is the average waiting time before I should take any action online? So it depends on the volume of requests Google is uh, getting. You need to understand something. Local listings uh, is owned by Google. You might validate that you are the business owner, but at the end of the day, the listings are owned by Google. It's their channel and they're providing it to you for free, right? Uh, so in my experience, a uh, couple of weeks ago, 
uh, when those five listings got suspended, it took about a week for Google to turn that around. Okay, all five were reinstated because they were new new locations. We provided, we were able to provide them with uh, enough information. All five were soft suspensions, uh, due to which we had our listings back within our within five days, five to six days. I think six working days it took. Okay. I know as a business owner, it's difficult to grasp that. Uh, there are times it's not quite apparent to us that uh, why my listing is suspended or it's, it gets most difficult when you have a paying client calling you every hour asking you, oh, why, the hell, why the hell am I paying you? Mm -hmm. But you do need to explain to them that uh, Google follows its own schedule. Uh, you cannot force them into doing something. So have patience. You have to play within Google's rules. They don't need to play by ours. Uh, makes sense. I think that answers the question perfectly. Uh, one more question that is there. Just a second. Let me read it. Uh, if you have business in different categories with the same name, can you have different Google profiles for each category? If not, like how should you go about it? Business, different business, uh, businesses with the same name. Yes. Yes and no. Yes, if you are an automotive dealer, uh, you are you can be a Volvo dealer, you can be a Mazda dealer, you can be a Honda dealer. Uh, from the same location, similar sounding names, except with exception for the brand. But just because you're a single location business and say, for example, you're a used car dealer, you're a new car dealer, uh, certain businesses are allowed to create uh, separate listings provided they, they are separate entities. For example, automotive dealers are allowed to create a separate listing for uh, for the car dealership versus the fixed and variable operations. But not all businesses are allowed that. Just because, say for example, you're saying you're you're selling jewelry, you're selling men's jewelry, you're selling women's jewelry. Uh, you cannot create two separate profiles for uh, two different segments of the same business. Okay. Uh, so there are rules in place, uh, go to the guidelines, there are specific sets of rules for automotive, there are specific sets of rules for healthcare businesses, as an example, if they are multi-specialty hospital, and you can create separate listings for your for each of the departments. Uh, if you are a, uh, if you are into healthcare, you can create separate listings for each of your practitioners or doctors. Uh, even lawyers are allowed to do that to a certain extent, but not every business is given the same privilege. Um, thanks. Uh, there are no more questions. Uh, again, we'll wait for a couple of minutes more. So if you have any questions, you can send them over to the chat or just raise your hands. You can come up on video. We'd love to see you as well. And yeah, Neil, let's wait for a couple of minutes. And after that, we can uh, go ahead with the quiz. Uh, as we discussed, you have all the freedom to choose uh, what we're going to talk about in these office hours. If there are any specific concerns that you want us to address, uh, we would be happy to take it up next week. And that's what we would decide. So you can just type in your answers. I'll roll out the question pretty soon. Till then, let's see if we have any more questions. Anyone else who's curious about what we spoke today? It doesn't look like anyone has any more questions today. It's great. Perfect. So let me just launch the quiz. You can just answer it. I'll take a note of all the answers. And based on that, we'll decide the content for next week's office hour. Here you go. Shita, we can make it a point to make
make this a static poll as well, a recurring event. So send it out along with the deck and invite to all uh, participants yes. uh, and people will register. We will be doing that as well. Uh, like one, one of the forms will go out with the email too. So you can select these topics there as well. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I think I've gotten a few. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Excited to see you next week. Uh, again, something or the other keeps happening with Google. I'm sure there'll be more exciting updates to talk about. Uh, have a good week ahead. I know the week is just starting, so I hope it's starting well for you. And yeah, good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.